Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. We're at the first ever Fiesta Fit Fest event. It's putting a healthy twist on Fiesta. Then on the night beat, we'll show you all the events in store for the weekend, and I partake in the Alpha Warrior Obstacle Course Challenge. Did John Paul just say Fiesta? Yes, we are heading into the second and final Fiesta weekend. Police are on patrol. They've arrested a number of people for DWI. We're going to discuss how many and the costs that come with that kind of arrest. But first, a teen in critical condition tonight after police say that he was shot in the face. This happened north of downtown near Lee High School. Officers say the 17 year old hanging out with two female friends under a bridge on Montview as they walk towards the school. They told police they heard a gunshot checked on their friend. Police say the teen did not know who shot him. Now developing tonight, taking a ride share from a Fiesta event could cost you what? Less than a hundred dollars or something, but getting arrested for a DWI that could cost you around $17,000. Yeah, maybe your license since Fiesta started nine days ago. Police have arrested 77 people in San Antonio for DWI. The night teams of Patty Santos reports. <laughs> not drink as much and be safe and if you're gonna drink don't drive today we have my 20 year old and she's gonna be driving us home it's one thing to go to fiesta and have a drink or two but it's another to then get behind the wheel i would tell him just uber i know it's a little bit more right now because of fiesta i mean i'd pay more money for an uber versus getting locked up a dwi can set you back about seventeen thousand dollars a breakdown by mothers against drunk driving says that includes fines attorney fees and an increase in your insurance bill we have all the officers out in full force as you know you've been to some of these events and you see officers at every corner sapd's dwi enforcement unit is keeping an eye on the roads and those stumbling on their way to their cars officers will detain them and find an option if we we can get a hold of a family member that can get them home safely in the event that they can't. Police have made 77 DWI arrests so far this fiesta. Last year, it was 169, but those numbers have dropped. In 2019, 204 arrests were made. The year before, it was 227. But you need to think about your safety and the safety of the public. It, it doesn't just affect you. Police say, have fun at fiesta, but know your limits. In a responsible way. I know when to say, okay, I'm done. You know, our crew has been out in the evenings all week long, and we have seen a high police presence not only around Fiesta events, but also on the highways. The police says that they have not had a DUI-related fatality in a decade, and they hope to do the same this year. Steve, Stephania? Thank you, Patty. Getting an Uber will also help you avoid traffic trouble. Taking a live look with live cam, things flowing very smoothly here. You see where I-10 and 410 come together. Yeah, but you look at that. Don't expect that to last <laughs> as people head to their Fiesta events tomorrow. We know there's a number of roads are going to be closed for tomorrow's parades. And yes, we will talk street closures in just a moment. But first, we have to bring in our meteorologist Katie Blake to talk about the Fiesta coverage with all the events you want to dress appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's King William Parade taking place in the morning yep. tomorrow. You've got Flambeau at night. So what can people expect if they're going to either of these events, Katie? Well, overall, more nice weather. It was so great this morning for Battle of Flowers. Tomorrow morning, also nice. And if you're going to get up early to head down to the King William District for the parade that starts at 9, the fair that lasts all day until 6 p.m., you may want about two layers for early in the day because it will be a somewhat chilly start to the day in the morning. We'll bottom out close to 50. By 9 o'clock, though, the sun comes up. We're closer to 60 and then it will be another very warm afternoon. So if you're going to be out for a good part of the day tomorrow, you'll want to dress in layers, a light, light jacket early on and then short sleeves by the afternoon. Something else that will change tomorrow, more wind. Winds will be light tomorrow morning, but by lunchtime starting to become breezy and then gusty through the afternoon. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about how that wind could factor into the flambeau forecast for tomorrow night and also talk about what the rest of the weekend has in store coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. All right, so let's talk about the King William Fair and Parade. It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. This is a fan favorite in Southtown, and that's where a lot of streets are going to be closed. That fair is going to be happening between East Gunther and Turner. So 
King William Street, Madison, Washington Streets, all of those are going to be closed. The Alamo is going to be closed at some points along the Alamo near Johnson, Bogard, and Turner. So lots of closures there. Yeah, Alamo Street will be closed. Mm. Yeah, new parade route, no problem. San Antonio is still turned out for this morning's Battle of Flowers Parade. A lot of people lining up along that route to get a chance to shout out the famous phrase, show us your shoes. Got my tennis shoes on tonight. <laughs> it's all part of a tradition in San Antonio where Fiesta Royalty not only shows off their gowns, they show off their shoes. Everything from boots to tennis shoes with intricate details. Parade goers flooded the area for a chance to experience the spirit of Fiesta. Yeah, I love seeing all the people together. We need this after COVID, so it makes me happy. I got to say, everyone who's been up and down the street has been super nice. I, I, I I think people are in a fiesta mood. That's what he there you go. said there at yeah. the end. And as you might expect, there were some challenges with parking. Others avoided that issue altogether by showing up extra early and save themselves a spot. That's what you do. All right. Well, tomorrow, another fiesta parade is going to return to the streets of San Antonio. We are talking about the largest illuminated night parade in the country. You know it as the Fiesta Flambeau Parade and like this year's Battle of Flowers Parade, the route for Fiesta Flambeau is indeed different. Now, here's a look at those road closures again. Keep these in mind if you're heading downtown. The street closures are going to start at 2 p.m. tomorrow for the Fiesta Flambeau Parade. The parade kicks off near San Antonio College. It ends near Alamo Plaza. And I know this is a lot of stuff to remember, but don't worry because we, you can check out this complete list of closures on our website, ksat.com. And you can also watch the parade from home right here on KSAT 12 or on ksat.com. The parade begins at 7 tomorrow night. We have a pre-show airing right in the smack dab middle of the parade. Yes. Well, the route it's going to be going. Our yeah. pre-show starts at Exciting 6. Stuff. There's another Fiesta event kicking off in time for the weekend. It's getting San Antonio to move with the festive flair. But how can you do that in your croc, Steve? I don't know. We're talking about Fiesta Fit Fest. The night team's John Paul Barajas is there. So, John Paul, how did everything play out tonight? Guys, Oh, I just want to mention, Steve, I want to check out those Crocs when I get back to the station. But, guys, it's been great. Uh, everything's wrapped up now. But just 30 minutes ago or so, uh, photojournalist Adam Barraza and I were rocking out. They had a free concert by Jack Ingram. And the best part about Fiesta Fit Fest is you have all the amazing food and drinks you could find at any other Fiesta event. But it's almost like it's guilt-free because they have so many activities and events to keep you in shape. Check it out. <laughs> Fiesta Fit Fest 2022. It's a brand new event that some hope is here to stay. It balances all the eating and drinking Fiesta has to offer with ways to shut off a few LBs. It's definitely a lot different. Everyone's like drinking at regular Fiesta, so I much rather this side. There's 5Ks and 10Ks, and some of the activities incorporate adult beverages like the beer mile. After the second one, for sure, third one, you kind of feel that little bloatedness coming in, but I'm going to try to definitely convince more people to come next time. Other events it has to offer throughout the weekend, the Le Tap Tour de France cycling race. That's the big attraction on Sunday, but my favorite, the Alpha Warrior Challenge. See, have a taco and come hit the monkey bars afterwards. Calories don't count, at least not as much. Drank a tasty sugary margarita, sweat it out with 250 pound fire hose pools, and get your second. Like chicken on a stick? Me too. Run it off by going up the warp wall. And now I don't feel guilty about having two. And although all of this is fun and a little tiring, it's here for a much bigger reason. We've been working to, like, together to be a, a, a fit, more healthy city, and so having a Fiesta event capped by Fit Fest is very appropriate. San Antonio, let's go, Fiesta. <laughs> Viva Fiesta! Now, this is all wrapped up. I think the only people here left are us, Adam, and the band who is actually tearing down their equipment right now. We tried to get them to play an encore for you guys, but they said they couldn't. They have an early start, and that's because if you didn't make it out today, don't worry, you have two more days. Fiesta Fit Fest kicks off tomorrow at 6 a.m. John Paul Barajas, KSA 12 News. John Paul, looks like he had a good time there. Now, don't forget that you can find all things Fiesta on our website. If you hold your phone's camera feature right up to the QR code on your screen, that's going to take you directly to all of our Fiesta coverage.
And now for a look at your headlines in our night beat news flash. Some calling it sticker shock. Bear County posting the new worth of homes online. They mailed out notices today on average property values on single family homes went up by nearly 28%. As we've reported high demand and low supply driving prices up. That'll mean higher taxes if tax rates stay the same. If you disagree with your appraisal, you can appeal it. For most people, the deadline to file notice of an appeal is May 17th. What started as a car fire ends with flames spreading to a nearby apartment. It happened in the parking lot of the Oak Stone Apartments. There it's near Loop 410 in Perrinbidal. Firefighters say flames from the car spread to a tree. Those embers then blown over to a nearby apartment building. Firefighters got those under control, then eventually put the car fire out. No injuries reported, but the flames did damage an electrical panel on the building. If power can't be restored, some people may have to move temporarily. An update on the slap at the Oscars. The Academy announcing Will Smith is banned from Academy events for 10 years, but the actor already announced his resignation after issuing a public apology to Chris Rock. Will Smith saying today he accepts and respects the Academy's decision. The fallout has impacted him through some of his films like Bad Boys 4, which was reportedly put on hold. We still have not heard from Chris Rock in all of this. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Still ahead on the night beat, ready for a rush. How Texas is preparing for one federal border restriction to end and what Border Patrol is already doing. And a mother's frustration over an experience her son never expected. If they would have took my child and I would have known where he was. The mistake that landed him in a room with CPS investigators. It's next on the night beat. A Harlandale ISD mother wants answers after her son was mistakenly interviewed by Child Protective Services. The 15 year old told KSAT that he was asked to leave class at Harlandale High School last week. That's when he met with CPS investigators. But there's just one problem. They had the wrong teenager. I was frightened. My hands were sweating a lot. I was, I was scared. I was, my legs were shaking. A CPS spokeswoman said that their interview ended before the investigators got into questions about specific allegations, but that teenager says otherwise. He says the investigators asked him if his home was safe and said that they would know if he was telling the truth. In a statement, Harlandale officials acknowledged that the wrong child was removed from class for the interview and that moving forward, district administrators would be notified when CPS investigators visit a school campus. Texas National Guard troops preparing for mass migration at the border. Soldiers started running drills in the valley this week, just days after Governor Greg Abbott promised migrants would be met by soldiers in riot gear. He also plans to bus migrants to Washington, D.C., but there's a catch. They must volunteer to go. The Border Patrol continues to report groups of migrants crossing the border. Agents found this group of 100 plus people in La Grulla earlier today. That's just west of McAllen. Another large group found in that same area last night. More migrants expected as Title 42 restrictions at the border and next month. History made. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson was honored today at the White House as she prepares to join the U.S. Supreme Court. It has taken 232 years and 115 prior appointments for a black woman to be selected to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. But we've made it. Jackson will be the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court in the nation's history. Senate Democrats voted unanimously for her, along with three Republicans, Senator Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, and Mitt Romney. Judge Jackson is going to replace her mentor, Justice Stephen Breyer, when he retires this summer. Live cam right now, let's go to Crockett Park. This is where we will be at this time tomorrow night. There you see the broadcast tower there. And case that insider event happens just behind it. Yes. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we're looking forward to meeting all of you. It's just been Fiesta's just been awesome this year. You can't complain about the weather. It's one of the all time greats when it comes to weather. That's for sure, Katie. I, I, I think so. Probably having it a little earlier in the month definitely helped out, but it's uh, just been a great few days and more pleasant weather tomorrow. The change tomorrow 
more wind and it will actually be a little windy on Sunday too. So let's jump into your weekend forecast starting with temperatures right now. 64 Stinson 58 Port SA falling into the mid 50s across the hill country. It is comfortable out there uh, today. Our almanac shows another big swing in temperatures 44 the morning low up to 81 this afternoon. That big swing from morning to afternoon is really because of this. The very dry air that we have in place Our dew points anywhere from the single digits across parts of the hill country to the 20s. So very dry air and currently we've got light winds. Winds were pretty light all day, but now they're dropping down to calm from Canyon Lake all the way down to Stinson back up into parts of the hill country. So a combination of the very dry air light winds and clear skies overnight will set us up for another kind of chilly morning. First thing in the morning before dawn, here's where your temperatures settle low around 48 Northern Bear County, 48 near Port SA, also 48 along Highway 90 out to Uvalde County lows in the low 40s across parts of the hill country. So a little chilly, but don't be deceived just like today. Things will warm up pretty quickly with more sunshine and low humidity tomorrow. Another big temperature swing from morning to afternoon. A lot of us jumping into the upper 80s, even some low 90s south of Highway 90. I mentioned the change tomorrow, more wind. As we get to lunchtime tomorrow, you'll notice things becoming a bit breezy. And then as we head into the afternoon, we could see some wind gusts up to 25 even as high as about 30 miles per hour. So the return of gusty winds and also the very dry air we talked about along with our current unfortunate drought situation sets us up for another red flag warning that will be in place from tomorrow from noon until eight. We're going to continue to see these being issued. Unfortunately, probably over the next few months until we can get the drought situation in a better spot. But remember, this means that fires can start and spread rapidly. No outdoor burning tomorrow all across South Central Texas. Some good news. Humidity starts to build back in Sunday. It won't be terribly uncomfortable during the day Sunday, but by Sunday night, certainly by Monday, our dew points are back into muggy territory and that comes hand in hand with the rain chances we've been talking about, but this is nothing to get too excited about next week. Unfortunately, isolated chances of some showers and storms as we get into Monday and Tuesday. Here's the setup. Big dip in the jet stream over the eastern US now is responsible for some precipitation there. As we get closer to Monday, the pattern will flip a bit. There will be a nice dip in the jet stream, some rain making energy over the western US. Unfortunately, we need this to go a bit farther south than it will to really help us out with good chances of rain. Nonetheless, some isolated showers and storms possible late Monday into Tuesday next week. We'll fine tune it over the weekend and keep you updated. So the big story tomorrow, another temperature swing from morning to afternoon and also gusty winds at times. So bit of a breeze through the parade tomorrow night. Otherwise, really comfortable. Steve and Stephania, you guys are in for a treat tomorrow night in many ways, not just with the weather. Absolutely. And the, the great thing about Flambeau is when the sun goes down, that's when the floats really start coming through. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. Super excited and it's going to be my first time, so can't wait for that. All right, so the, the Spurs, I mean, definitely there was a question as to whether they would play here at home. Right, and get a home court advantage in the play-in tournament. That's look less likely now because as many as four Spurs stars will not be available for tomorrow's final home game. We'll tell you why when we come back. And who's leading the Masters? Just the hottest golfer in the world. Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs have to win out their two remaining games, where the New Orleans Pelicans will have to lose their two remaining games in order for the Spurs to swap play in positions with that home court advantage. That's after the Spurs lost to the Timberwolves in Minnesota last night, ending their five game road trip win streak. And in the process, the Pelicans beat the Blazers. DeJounte Murray missed his fourth straight game with a respiratory illness, and his absence, Trey Jones, did a bang up job, averaging almost 14 points, eight and a half assists a game, with no turnovers until last night, where he committed two. But that hasn't lessened his enthusiasm or that of his teammates. We feel that as a team, um, our chemistry is clicking. Uh, you know, we're on the same page as a team, and um, I think we just want to continue that um, going into the playing game, um, knowing that uh, we just need one game to advance, and then it's another just one game thing, and then we could 
uh, be in the playoffs. So just try to continue to play our best basketball. But a win tomorrow night, a little highly unlikely because Murray, Johnson, Pardo, and Vassell are all out with various injuries. That game against the Warriors will be this first final home game of the regular season. As as such, will be a fan appreciation night. We'll also give the silver and black opportunity to salute the man who brought the Spurs to San Antonio in 1973, B.J. Red McCombs. It's part of the original ownership group. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich recalls meeting Red, who is now 94 years young, for the very first time. You just fall in love with the guy. He's bigger than life, is what I really mean by that. And I can remember the first time he walked in the gym in his big cowboy boots and his fur coat and that big hat, and I had no idea where I had landed. <laughs> uh, but I uh, learned a lot from him, and uh, he's special to a whole lot of people. He sure is. A cold and windy second round of the Masters today made some of the best golfers in the world look almost human, right? Tiger Woods started the day at one under, but by the sixth hole, he was three over. He pulled it together in the afternoon. Tiger's third shot in the par 5, 13. He gets it to within two feet of the cup for a birdie to get to two over. Next hole, Tiger staring down this nine-foot putt for back-to-back -back birdies. He falls, and he's at one over heading into the weekend. One golfer who's leading the pack, Scott Scheffler, who's able to birdie six of his last 12 holes to the 15th hole. Now Scheffler was this putt to give him a four-shot edge, and and that's in the hole. He had also birdie 16 to Carter, 67 on the way to an eight under with a five shot lead going into Saturday. But Woods, a five time Masters champion, says he's still in the hunt. I felt good about how I fought back today and got, got myself. I could have easily kicked myself out of the tournament today, but I kept myself in it. And, uh, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be an important day. You know, if you're within five or six on that back nine going into Sunday, you got a chance. All right, here's a look at the leaderboard. And Scotty Scheffler, by the way, the hottest golfer right now on the PGA Tour. Here are some other favorites that include, of course, Tony Finau and, of course, Tiger Woods. But Jordan Smith, as you can see right there, missed the cut. High school soccer playoffs coming up next. Girls High School Soccer Regional Semifinals this afternoon. Reagan taking on Brennan. Both two wins away from a berth in this year's state tournament. Rattlers down 1-0. Late in the second half, Emma O'Brien puts it in under the crossbar. Great shot. Ties it to 1-all. and sends it into overtime in the first 10-minute extra period. Taylor Jernigan finds Cam Jordan in front, and she buries it to the back of the net. Reagan scores three goals in overtime. They advance to tomorrow's regional final against Austin Westlake. 4-1 is the final. We have been down before, uh, and we knew like if we just set our minds to it, we can do it. We can push through. We can push the like push through the back line and get the ball in the back of the net, which we did. After we we took care of this one, like our, all of our minds are focused on the next one. Next on the pitch, Reagan boys looking to punch their ticket to the regional final against Laredo Alexander. Rattlers waste no time taking control of this one. A little over three minutes of the match, Aiden Phelan smokes a left-footed shot right under the crossbar. An incredible goal opens the scoring. It's 1-0 Reagan. Three minutes later, they strike again. This time, Pato Tenorio puts a rebound into the back of the net. The Rattlers score three goals in the first half. They roll 6-0. At the beginning of the game, we knew we had to handle this to go to the regional final. So yeah, it was like, it was more of like a motivator, like let's show no mercy and let's get more goals. Oh yeah, it's the girls, two both schools going regional finals. I don't know if it's the first time in history, but it will be, it will be remembered definitely. The Reagan boys will face Lake Travis in the regional final tomorrow at three. An estimated 250 athletes with physical disabilities and visual impairments from across the state of Texas gathered today at Morgan's Wonderland Sports to begin competition in nine sports at the 11th annual Texas Regional Games presented by Hartford Insurance. Besides, Morgan Sports competition is also being held at Hero Stadium and Star Soccer Complex and included archery and tennis competition. Remember, these are the games that had to be postponed twice due to the COVID pandemic. And the Texas League action starts off tonight with the missions of their first game and Oh, it's tonight. Mm, doesn't look like he's going to end well. In the ninth inning, the Hooks and Corpus Christi had their hooks in the missions 14 to 2. Hey, it's always tomorrow. The season is young. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be back after this. All right. Don't forget, tomorrow starts off cool, but we get very warm once again. Also, more wind for Fiesta festivities on Saturday. It'll also be bit windy at times on Sunday, but humidity will start to build back in. And then we've got some isolated thunder shower chances late in the day, Monday, and then again on Tuesday. Dry cold fronts Wednesday of next week brings our highs back down to the 80s. So we're not getting too hot mm -hmm. permanently just yet, guys. Bearable. We should just enjoy this. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, can't wait for tomorrow. Can't wait to see you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll good, see you tomorrow. Good morning, San Antonio starts at 6.